Hi everyone, my name is Les I Reed and welcome to another video. So I'm still participating in the romance takeover. I'm losing track of the days, <laughs> so I'm gonna leave which day I am on on the screen. But I did not film yesterday. I'm gonna talk about what happened a little later after I talk about what I am reading. So I started an audiobook. I want to mention Jen from the Book Refuge because she doesn't know who I am. But um, is she running this readathon? I think she's one of the hosts. But I've been watching some of her videos and I'm finding them so helpful, like her tips and stuff. So go check out her channel. Specifically, um, I watched um, the one that's helping me with my reading is how to read more. She reads voraciously, like to a number that I can never <laughs> reach ever and that's okay. But I recommend if you want to learn how to read more, check out this video. I'll link it down below. But anyways, so I started listening to an audiobook and I've always struggled trying to figure out how to listen to audiobooks. I think basically what I need to do is cut out news. Um, it would probably be mentally better for me anyways to not watch as much news, but I need to try and make some adjustments. I have been waking up super early and not super early, but I wake up with my family and I usually watch news in the morning and I probably watch way too much news. So I thought, because my instinct is to wake up, get a cup of coffee, and watch something. That's my instinct. And I think what I need to do is transition to just listening to audiobooks. And I need to just allow myself to listen to more audiobooks. I think with small kids, I've always felt reluctant to be plugged in. Um, and so that's why I've been kind of putting audiobook listening off. Is it just... It doesn't feel intuitive to me to like be plugged in when you have kids but my kids are a little bit older now and I can always like have one earbud in. They interrupt like but then I can just pause it and rewind it and then keep going. So I think that's what I'm going to be doing and I'm going to try and multitask more um, if I don't need to listen to audio while I'm doing something then I should be listening like if it's possible multitask I should be I think that's what I'm trying to get at um I'm always afraid that I can't multitask but I think I can so I'm gonna be experimenting and I think it has to be the right audiobook it has to be something fun and light-hearted and nothing too deep does that make sense or confusing so no high fantasy no YA fantasy um, but romance. I did find one. I'm super excited about it. I'm loving it so far. I found, I like, I went through while I was listening to her, um, video, Jen's video, I, uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> sorry. Chelsea from Chelsea Darling Reads just read A Court of Thorns and Roses. Oh my goodness, I miss her video so much, but, um, that just doesn't seem like her at all. Anyways, I'm reading, like, a sequel in a long series. I'm excited to find that I found the series and it's called Hero. The book is called Hero's Haven, written by Rebecca Zanetti. This is book 11 in a series, but it's really like a standalone. Like, I feel like I don't need to know too much. It's paranormal. She, I don't remember these people's names. Do they have it listed? He's Quaid and she is Haven. That's her name. Duh. Um, and I think she gave that her name, her name, I think she gave herself that name. Um, what's it? So, he is half demon, half, like, it's gonna sound goofy, but I love this stuff. It's giving me huge Buffy vibes. I'm so excited. Or even, like, Shadowhunter vibes feel like YA. Like, it's giving me kind of an urban fantasy paranormal world, and I love that stuff. So, he's half demon, half vampire and we find out that she's half fae half demon um and but she thinks she's human she thinks she's insane because she has all these visions usually while she's sleeping and she has had visions of this man um who's his name's Quaid and he's half demon half vampire and she sees him in this kind of like hell place um, it sounds like hell, 
and we find out he's like part of seven warriors who I'm assuming are probably also half demon half vampire who I don't know I'm, I'm a little bit fuzzy on it but they have to do something and he was in this realm or like hell or whatever dimension um to keep someone there I think obviously I'm really fuzzy but it's faded mates which I'm loving but it sounds like they can't meet because of what he has to do so I'm loving it so much so far. She's on the run. Someone's chasing her. Obviously the details are a little fuzzy for me, but I'm loving it so far. And since, what did I say? This is book 11, which is insane. Um, I want to start at the beginning. I found the ebook, unfortunately. Like I was hoping just to listen to this stuff, this, these books on audio, but um, that's okay. I'll, after I'm done my, a physical read, I'm gonna read this series I want to read it so yeah I'm excited to find a new series so I guess I'll flip flop between like audio and ebook depending on what's available on overdrive or hoopla so I'm loving that so far I was gonna pick up the Duke and I but I'm not feeling it and one thing I'm learned from <laughs> Jen from the book refuge is don't force yourself to read something you're not in the mood for so I have other books as well, and I'm not in the mood for any of these, but before I move on to the next thing I want to do with you is, okay, so I didn't film yesterday. My plan has always been to try and daily vlog during the week, like Monday to Thursday, and so I apologize if I have one less video this week. My daughter got sick, and she has a cough. We're in this pandemic, and so my daughter had to get taken in to get tested. We don't know the results yet, but I was really upset yesterday. So um, I couldn't do anything. I had to take a day off from reading. I had to take a day off just from booktube and stuff. So um, I wasn't overly functional <laughs> yesterday. I feel so much better though today. Um, obviously, we don't know. Um, so we're all at home now. Um, normally my husband would go in, but I said we're not really, she's a child, so we're not really isolating her. I think that would be too hard, and I don't even know how to do that in a family. So my husband luckily can work from home, so that's amazing. So, um, and he, so he's a teacher, and high schools are online right now anyways, so it doesn't affect his workflow at all. Um, he says he actually works better at home, so <laughs> there you go. So I'm sorry, I may have one less video up, and I didn't read it all yesterday. I just had to take the day. Um, you know, when you're in that state, sometimes you need to take the day. I have some packages. Whoops. I have some packages that I'm really excited for, and I think I will have some options in here. I did order books a long time ago. I never remember by the time they get here. I think I know what's in here, but I don't know. I feel like, whoops, I need to make sure. I think I know what's in here, but I don't remember. So I'm going to open this one first because it's small. I ordered a couple, like, you know, with Black Friday, I ordered books. Um, yeah, this is just one of the books, so I'm missing a package. But I ordered, but I ordered the coldest girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. I think this is a vampire book, um, and I think it's just a standalone. Cold Town was dangerous. Tana knew a glamorous cage, a prison for the damned, and anyone who wanted to party with them. So I'm excited to get this. I'm like slowly collecting Holly Black's books, but not really reading them. <laughs> and then I have book outlet. Not all of this is for me. I bought a bunch of books for my kids for like Christmas. So um but I think I did I don't remember. I need to look up what I ordered because I don't remember. Yeah a lot of this is kids books. So I can show you the kids books too just quickly. Um I'm going to it's funny, my daughter, she's reading. I think she might be a little bit gifted. Um, and I'm not trying to break or anything. There's a lot of challenges with gifted children too. I wouldn't be surprised because my husband's a little gifted. So she's reading at like grade three level and she's in grade one. 
So I'm like almost nervous that these books are a little too young for her. She'll read anything, but I have, and some of them are for my son as well. I have The Beauty and the Beast. That's cute. I think she will might be able to read this stuff. Um, I got my husband a gift. I don't think I'm going to show it because I don't, <laughs> I don't think he watches my videos, but you never know. I got Gil Gilberto and the Wild. And I don't remember, like, I think I just bought a bunch of stuff and I'm going to divide it. I think some are for my daughter and some for my son. I didn't realize this was a board book. I wouldn't have bought this, but Will's on the bus. Um, the Miracle of Easter. We are Christian, so my, my daughter loves, like, Bible stuff. My son loves PJ Masks. PJ Masks Race for the Ring. Sorry if this is not interesting. I'll try to be quick. Annie and Snowball and the Cozy Nest. Here we go. Oh, can you see me? I'm excited about this. I love collecting the I Can Read It All By Myself books. I love those. I haven't seen that one before. I have The Tales of Peter Rabbit. I like that. I have another I Can Read It All By Myself, A Skunk in My Bunk love that all right i have grandma's at bat i thought that would be fun i have pj masks power up pj masks uh -huh. all right i got some sticker books i got little chicks and then Ocean Life, I got, these were super cheap, of course, right? So Daniel's Winter Adventure, my kids like watching that show. I have my Perfectly Purple Coloring Bag, that's super cute. And then I have Infinity in the Game book, it's a sticker book thingy. I have my first sticker and coloring. I got two like with the handle. I thought they would each like that. And then I have a Frozen Springtime Surprises. My daughter is obsessed with Frozen. No surprise there. And I did get two cookbooks. I totally forgot. I thought I was going to cook vegan and now I'm not sure anymore. But I have Fresh from the Vegan Slow Cooker. I worked with this specific authors I like borrowed a book from them I think it was this one from the library and I liked some of the recipes so I do have these two cookbooks you know I love cookbooks I don't care um and then I hope I have enough time I have eight minutes <laughs> I did get okay John if you're watching skip ahead because this is do I dare risk it I don't think I will. I'm going to keep it a secret. Sorry. Um, I got some Christmas books. That's right. A few. I only got two, like, romance. Well, I got a few. So, um, Lindsay Sands, My Favorite Things. This is a Christmas collection. I did not realize that. Um, but they're all written by Lindsay Sands. So, the short stories are All I Want, Three French Hens, and... The Fairy Godmother. And then I got a Lori Wilde, The Christmas Dare. And this is a novel. Um, I also got Xmas, A Love Hate Story by Kate Bryan. I think this might be YA, but I think it's like old YA. Um, I've seen it before. It's 2009. Okay. I have The Christmas at the Chalet. I remember the description sounded interesting. Um, so that's why I got it. And then a mystery, a gift of bones, uh, by Carolyn Haynes. This is a cozy mystery. I want to try cozy mysteries a lot. Um, so I'm excited about that, but it's a romance readathon. Now I have no idea what I want to read, but I need to figure it out. Cause honestly, I think I'm not interested in this or Lori Wilde. I don't know. I need to look, I need to read the descriptions. But that's my haul. So all the kids' books were um, for Christmas, obviously. So they're going to have a lot of <laughs> gifts.
my battery is about to die. So I'm going to figure out what I'm going to read. I'm going to plug you in and I'll let you know what I've decided. So as you can see, <laughs> there's a bunch of romance right there. I'm not really in the mood to read any of that, <laughs> but um, I think I might just try. That's the thing to do. If you're not sure what to read, you can always try it. If you don't want to read it, you don't have to. I'm going to try this one. I don't know what else to read anyway, so I'm almost tempted if um, I'm not in the mood for this to read the first book in that paranormal series. I don't know. Um, we'll see. But I don't have tons of adult romance, and for whatever reason, like that stack, I'm not overly interested. Um, there it go. This I'm actually maybe willing to read because it's short stories and it's Regency. I don't know why I don't want to read The Duke and I. I should want to, but I don't know. I'm kind of in a m weird mood. I have my tea. Sorry for my messy side table, but it's my husband's. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it all the way around. Here, let's go like this. It's actually a super cool mug. I like it. I usually don't like <laughs> use it, but all the big mugs were dirty. So I'm using it then. So I'm gonna try steak out and we'll see how it goes. Okay, I read some of this, and I'm not hating it, so that's good. Um, it says I've read 22 pages. I think I've read even less than that. Um, okay, so from what I can... Oh, goodness. So from what I can understand, um, there was a murder. Some guy was about to see... I never remember names. Regina. I think that's her name. He was going to see Regina... She's a defense attorney, and she was his lawyer. She, he, she got him out of jail for a like a robbery, and but he was like, the prologue started where he's sitting in his car about to see her, but he's terrified and he's really afraid. He's always been afraid. We don't know why. Um, and then we see him get killed. Some person knows. The guy who killed him said before killing him, like, are you in a, you're about to tell her, aren't you? And he said nothing, and then he, the guy stabbed him. Regina is about to go on vacation for Christmas, but, um, but she's waiting for this guy who got killed. Um, doesn't know why she's, he's not showing up. Eventually she leaves her office because he doesn't show, and then she finds him. And then in comes the detective the main detective his name is Marcus he's a homicide detective and apparently Regina has a reputation for being a hard ass <laughs> and like getting a lot of people out of jail kind of thing right so he's expecting someone who is uptight apparently she's like drop dead gorgeous or whatever and um, it's, uh, they call, like, it's, um, uh, what's the right word? Both the main characters are people of color. Um, they called her warm, dark, or warm black skin, I think. And clearly the detective is a person of color. I think I tried looking up Carrie Connor. I couldn't figure out who this author is. Like, there wasn't much on this author, so I don't know if it's actual like own voices representation but this is the harlequin with two leads that are of color so if that's interesting to you so far i don't hate it so i'm gonna keep reading it and trying it and if i like it then i'm gonna read it so um that's good news i need to make my kids lunch i probably need to figure out what to read uh what to 
eat as well. Um, I'm, s I have my period. Um, I'm just, usually on the first day, I'm just so drained. Like, I'm so tired. So, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm fine to make lunch and stuff, but I'm just so drained. So, um, after I make their lunch, I'm going to just come back and read some more and just relax because I'm exhausted. Like, I feel exhausted. So, um, that's what I'm, I'm going to do. And I think if I don't end up liking it, I'm going to, like, read the shortest romances I have on my bookshelves. And these are the next two. I think that might be why I picked these ones. And just keep picking up a book until I find something I like. Um, find the shortest <laughs> the shortest romances on my bookshelves, but I think I'm gonna like this one. I think it's gonna be fine. It's uh, like I'm gonna read it. So here we go. Okay, so I've been reading this. <laughs> I don't get a glare. <laughs> Um, Silent Night Stakeout by Carrie Connor, and I got to page 66, and <laughs> it's okay. It's cheesy. I'm not, I don't know, like, it's a not, it's not a long book. It's 200 pages, and it's a detective story, so you need, I was, I don't know, I don't know what to expect, but, like, they're solving a crime together, this guy, like the detective and the attorney, they're working together. She is somehow involved in the crime, like someone's kind of after her. So, and the, her client gets killed. And so she wants to figure out who killed him. Um, and it's a detective story and they're falling for each other. Major insta-love, like, it's, um, I don't want to judge it too much because I don't know if you could do much else with this kind of story except insta-love, but it's like they, like, looked at each other's eyes and, like, had an instant connection and they're both, like, drop-dead gorgeous and, um, can't stop thinking about each other even though they literally just met. So, um, I'm not really, like, it's fine, but I don't think I want to read it. I don't think I'm gonna like it and so far like I guess it's a romance but I guess I'm not feeling it and it doesn't it's not fun it's they're solving this crime and I think I do like detective stories but I don't think it's a very good one um I think if I want to know I went to, I guess I technically knew I was getting into a detective story, but I feel like I already know who the killer is, <laughs> and it's only been 60 pages. It feels heavy-handed, like, the romance feels really heavy-handed and cheesy. The crime feels kind of heavy-handed, like, I can tell who it is, at least I think it is. I'm kind of, I might, like, skim to see if I'm right, but, um, like, the writing's fine, I guess. But um, I don't like it's super cheesy. Let me see if I can have an example. They were back in the close confines of his car. The small space accentuating his sheer size. His presence, a palpable thing she couldn't begin to ignore even when she wasn't looking at him. He was too big and she felt him too keenly, her skin practically buzzing with awareness of his closeness. That's not so bad, but um, yes, he was good looking, but this was something more than that, something entirely too disturbing. She was an intelligent woman. She believed in logic and reason, and there was nothing logical or reasonable about the level of response she had to this man. And like, so they're having language like that, and it's like, you just met this man. Like, I, I don't know. It doesn't, it feels, I think the beginning part is probably better. <laughs> he looked for something so he's about to he's looking for her she he hasn't met her yet um at the crime scene um that's where they met like he she calls the police 
and so this is when the detective comes and she's he's about to question her and he's assuming it's going to be someone stern looking or whatever and it's like you looked for someone who was frowning someone who looked ready for a fight someone who was drop dead beautiful <laughs> it's just like he stopped and almost did a double take as soon as he saw her and there was no doubt this was her a street lamp behind her poor poured its glow directly over her, illuminating her as effectively as a spotlight, which from the look of looks of her was exactly where <laughs> this woman deserved to be. Even from a distance, there was no mistaking the beauty of that face, her features perfectly formed, her l lips lush and full, her skin a dark warm brown. Her coat was belted at the waist and molded to her body, hinting temptedly at lush curves. Despite her obvious beauty, she didn't look as cold and unapproachable as such women often did. Certainly not the angry and arrogant figure he'd been expecting. There was a warmth, a kindness to her face, something approachable despite the worry on it that made her infinitely more appealing. Their eyes met across the distance. Hers widened slightly with surprise, with shock, with something he recognized all too well as a charge suddenly jolted through his body. He stood as frozen as the world around him, but all he felt inside was raw heat. And it's just like, you just look, <laughs> I don't like it. It's, I don't think it's good. I don't like it. So do I dare try another Halloween? <laughs> it's, yeah, I don't like it. So, I am gonna like skim read it and figure out who the killer is. That'd be kind of interesting. Um, but I think I'm gonna DNF it. I'm not liking it. So, the next one <laughs> um, is Kathleen Long. And oh, do I dare? I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about it. But this one is he. Yeah, I don't think I want to read this. I don't, what am I going to read? I don't know. <laughs> okay, this is not working out. It's not working out. No, I want it to work out. Okay, I'm going to have to figure something out. <laughs> so, I was wrong about the killer, but I don't care. <laughs> I looked it up. I was wrong. So, that would have been an interesting twist, but I don't want to read this book. <laughs> I'm going to have to figure something else out. Okay. So, I looked on Goodreads, and, okay, so first of all, I should mention, I have other Holoquins, um, and I have a couple that are quite short, and they're specifically not intrigue novels. I think I need a break from Holoquin, <laughs> just to, um, yeah, since I had a bad experience. I'm sure they're not all bad, but I don't want to pick another one up. But since I tried Intrigue and have two other Intrigues, I think I'm gonna unhaul these because I don't think it's something that I like. I like, I like kind of suspenseful romance, I guess is what these are considered. But I think maybe I want something longer than these books and maybe a little bit better writing. I know these are different authors, but like I read the backs and I think I just don't care. And I think I don't want to read about like detectives and like people part of the force, I guess. I don't know. Like I prefer more urban fantasy, fantasy kind of thing when it comes to suspense. So the next, besides a Harlequin, the next shortest book that it's adult is Moon Cold by Patricia Briggs. So... Um, this is actually a really nice copy and it has a bookmark in it. I bought this second hand, I'm almost positive. I didn't realize how good this copy was. <laughs> but um, one time I went to, like before the pandemic, I went to some thrift stores, um, not quite in the city, but close to the city. I have to drive, if I want to do city shopping, I have to go, I have to drive. Like, I live in a small town, um, and the city is an hour and a half away, and there's some kind of borough cities around the city that I can shop in. Anyways, a long time ago, probably like a year ago now or longer, I wanted to stock up on some adult urban fantasies, paranormal, and so I have a few of Patricia Briggs. I have this one, and then I have Hunting, Hunting Grounds and Crywolf. 
This is the first in the um, Mercy Thompson series. And then that one is part of the same universe, but it's not the same series. I forgot what that series is called. But this is the first book in the, in the Mercy Thompson. And I don't know much about it. Her next door neighbor is a werewolf. She is a mechanic, I think. And she's not normal herself, but she like is aware of werewolves, vampires, and other possible creatures. I've never read the series before, so I have no idea what kind of creatures there are. But I'm gonna pick that up. Not this instant, but I think that might be the next book I read. Since I am in a paranormal, this seems like the right thing to read. And it's short. It's under 300, but pushing 300, 288. And if I like this, I have a whole series to work through. And it sounds exciting to me, but these are gonna go. These are free, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I think if I want to unhaul books, I need to use a free bookmark. Um, where I am, libraries are closing soon and most stores. We have a thrift store, um, but I'm assuming that's going to be closing. But we have like a, oh, what's it called? It's like someone in front of their house, they have like a free library box. We can like leave one or take some. So I think when I want to, if when I'm ready to unhaul some books, I might go there and leave books behind and then see if there's anything. But I might wait until the stack gets a little bit bigger and then I would do that. Normally I would just donate a bunch of books at my husband's school, but Schools aren't open right now, and I don't think it makes sense to donate books if kids aren't reading them right now. So I might wait to do that until the schools are open again. But plus it'd be kind of fun to use the little community. I don't know what they're called. I forget what they're called. But leave one, take one kind of situation. But this is going to be my next read. Um, but I'm going to do a little bit of work and take a break from reading because apparently... <laughs> didn't work out for me. Let's turn on the light. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, I don't have any updates, but what I'm gonna do is read this tonight. I'm gonna start it. It's late, it's like nine, quarter to 10. I'm gonna wash my face and start reading this. So, um, this is the end of the day's vlog. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I would love to know if you've read any of the books that I've read, um, whether it's this one or the audiobook I'm reading or the Harlequin I read. Comment down below. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions about them. If you want more reading vlogs from me, I will link the playlist down below. If you want, I have videos on the screen. You can click on their, them there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you have not done so. You can follow me on Goodreads and Instagram. And you know what? I want you to keep reading. Bye.